Okay, so if we look at one of our fellow classmates' sites, we'll take a quick look at it. The first thing that I'll check is it mobile friendly. So I'm going to resize my my web browser just to see if it does resize. So if we're big, it looks good. If we're medium, it seems to look good. And if we're small, it looks good. So good, you got mobile friendly. You got mobile friendly active there. That's good. You have continue reading, which is good. Instead of the whole blog post being all 100 words visible on the home page, you've got to snip it and then read more. That's very useful. I want to go back and look at the links. I used to have a links to Forbes magazine, which is where I got the inspiration. So you've got the ability for people to share on social. That's also very useful there. I'd be careful here. You've got categories, perhaps too many, and tags, too many. Oh, okay. uh, there is a point, at a, again, diminishing returns. You can put as many categories and tags as you'd like, but then the search engines at a certain point feel that that's too many, too spammy. Again, uh, it's a fine line. And so what I would say for hard numbers of people want, for the number of categories, I would keep it between one and three. So you have gems in history, jewelry and film, magnificent jewels, recreative jewelry design. See if you can get that up to three at maximum, the three most important. So one to three categories. And then as for tags, I would say three to five tags. So here we've got more than five. So I would see again, what are the most important ones? And so the reason for that again is that the search engines will look at all your categories and tags and at a certain point even stop paying attention to them. And if it's too many, then it'll seem spammy. Do you have any way for people to get in contact with you if you'd like to be contacted? Um, there's a, I thought there was a contact box. No, just follow up. Yeah, if you yeah, do want, right. if you do want people to contact you, you would want a contact page, page, or you would want to have a um, a contact form in your about page. Just it's any way for people to contact you. one more thing and then we'll we'll go on. Um, it's often because we might not all have the experience or the education, it's hard to get a good graphic that shows well behind a picture. Here it looks fine. Um, the white text on that background is still very visible. When, I, when we went over to this other page, I'm here having a little bit harder time to see your text because your background is so busy. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is either fade or blur that background picture so that it doesn't fight for so much attention to your text, or maybe change the color of this text, but that's always a challenge for people. I've got a background picture, I want to put text on top of it. You have to have maybe a blurry picture, a faded picture, something that doesn't fight with your foreground text. Any questions or comments for Kathleen before we move on? I have one question, how people interact with this page, if we go down all the way to the bottom. <coughs> would you want to sort by project? Would you want to sort by archive, archives? How do people think? Why do we have both options when we're setting up the blog? Do people really know you wrote something in November? They don't know, but that's why they would click to see what did you write in November. The point of having the archives is that they, if they really like your content, they want to go back into your archives and perhaps read what you've written in the past. So the archives are useful. This by project, this might get unwieldy at a certain point. That's actually defined by categories, so maybe I have too many categories. You can set the widget to show you three categories, for example, um, instead of all of them. Oh, okay. One last thing that I would say, 
uh, perhaps think about dividing up your content into page one, page two, page three, because this just goes on and on and on. Even, even if you have that read more, I would still cut that down. Ten is too much. I would do between three and five per page. Set three to five books. All right, next. Thank you. Yes. MissionValleyPilates.com. All right, good. I like that you've got at the top right away a, get, a way to get in contact with a call to action, free consultation. So that's good. If you provide some sort of goods or services, uh, one of the most important things to have is a way to contact you. Some people are going to contact you via email. Some people are going to pick up the phone. So if you have a phone number, make it front and center. There it is right at the top. That's good. If you don't have a phone number for your business, you can get a free Google Voice phone number. You can look at it up yourself. I don't have time for it, but go to Google Voice and get a free phone number from Google. You've got your social at the top. This is for your own social channels. That's good. What I would do is I see on your... I can't zoom in at the same time, but I see on your Twitter, you've got your, your Twitter profile, mdpilates.com. That's good. Um, you also need to claim your name on the other ones. I guess you've got Mission Valley Pilates and Fitness on Facebook. Maybe the other names were taken. It doesn't, it doesn't quite matter, but it is useful, especially for your users, if you're consistent with the names of your profiles on social media. So if you can perhaps get MV Pilates as many times as you can, that'd be better than Facebook being Mission Valley Pilates and Fitness, <coughs> and Twitter being MV Pilates. Of course, it might be taken and you'll have to settle for a different name. So I see that also on LinkedIn. You should go in there and claim your name, either your business name on LinkedIn or your personal name. It seems your personal name is there, which is fine, but you want to claim your name because your LinkedIn address currently is linkedin.com slash pub slash Claremont slash 38 slash 316 slash blah blah blah. You will be able to get linkedin.com slash Claremont if you click to claim your name. Thank you. We have contact, very good. What I would suggest about contact is what's to stop spam guy, spam at spam.com, spam. What's to stop that? You don't have a caption get one of those little plugins or activate it on your site so that there's that extra type in this weird code those are those captures you know the the eight nine seven two five eight those random codes that appear that helps prevent anyone from sending you anything it helps prevent it it doesn't always always stop it but this helps get a captcha it's spelled c a t c h a captcha they could to answer yes or no? exactly because usually you have to read uh, what it's asking you to answer yes or no to but if it's only yes or no that's still not as protected as some other ones that I've seen like what does this plus this equal and there's like numbers floating around and then you answer seven mm -hmm. so there's many kinds of captures you've got this contact form here which is great Therefore, you don't need your, your email naked right there. That's going to get you spammers. There's spam bots running 24 hours a day searching for anything that looks like an email. All emails have the same pattern. Something at something dot something. So spam bots are going to be browsing the web all day long, and when they run across that, they'll put it into their mailing list and sell that to people, and you're going to start to get spam. The point of having the contact form is that protects your email. So I would remove that. So does it even if it's an at? Yeah, because it's at something. They're going to see the pattern. Something at something dot something. Three letters usually. If, if it fits the pattern, most likely it's an email, they'll grab it.
Okay, any questions or comments uh, for Claire? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, next. Yes. You've got your number up there, which is also good. The, the one thing that I might say, though, that it's a graphic. Um, there's a difference here. This number at the top is plain text. I can select it as plain text. If I'm browsing on my mobile device, that, that text number will most likely automatically just simply be active. I can tap that and it makes the call. Your, your phone that's over here is, you, is on the mobile site like this. as a graphic. No, as a tap and you can get to it. And it have different uh, front page and mobile site. Okay, okay, good. Does um, it matter than if it's over there like that? No, it still matters because then the search engine looks at this particular page and it will not see that phone number unless you also added alt text to that graphic that has your phone number. So the big recommendation here for anyone is if there's any text, often oftentimes you should try to make that as text, not as a graphic. Um, like the word services here. That seems to be normal text. That's Is it fine. Okay, since I have it again down there. The phone number? Yeah. This one here? Yeah. This one is regular text. That's better. Yes. Okay. If you have it more than once, if it's if it's text more than once, it might not be so good. But since you've got one of them versions as graphic and one of them as text, that's that's good. What did we just say a moment ago? I see. Yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. So okay, be careful that. about that. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, this also is regular text. Great, that's regular text. The search engine will analyze that, put it on yeah, put it on a map. If I visit the site, I might be able to access that map with a click. Yeah. If it was a graphic, I might not be able to. Are these images images that you yourself shot? No. Are these images that you acquired as stock images? Yeah. Okay. That's good. If you simply borrow images from a Google search, that is not so good because you don't know if those images are legal for you to use. Are they copyrighted? Are they trademarked, etc.? Um, if you get some image from a Google search, I'm not going to assume that it's safe for me to use. But if I did a search, right, if I go to a search engine and look for dental stock images. The keyword is stock images. Whatever you're looking for with the keyword stock images, you're going to be better off because then you're going to get images that are legal for you to use, that are okay for you to use, so that you don't get the lawyers after you. Mm -hmm. If there's a way that you can like double check, like I believe I, that I have you know, that, that the photos that I have on my site that I've purchased are okay. Mm -hmm. from the company I bought them from, but to double check, can't you just run your photo through some kind of a tracker that then tells you? I'm pretty sure Google itself, I think it's called a reverse search, something like that. I think you can run your own image through Google and it will tell you where else it appears. Okay. And that way you can figure out if it's, if it's a safe image to use. The, the point though is, okay, we have stock images, that's one keyword. We have public domain images. So whatever your company is or whatever you're looking for, plus public domain images, that's another kind of search to do. So stock images, public domain images are a couple of kinds of images you should be searching for. But better are your own original images. So that's good. Um, so the what we do for clients, you know, we, we set up their websites and all of that, and we also offer photography services. It's an extra charge, of course, but we then create a hundred pictures for them that are unique to their product, so that it doesn't look like someone else's picture, so that it's not just another image that you found on Google that could get you into trouble. So that's good, you're using your own original images as well, and stock images. 
That's good. This is purely my personal opinion, but I would not write an apostrophe on facts. Isn't okay. the apostrophe possessive? I missed that. Okay. So. Good. Thank you. Um, contact. You've got a form and schedule an appointment. That's good. Yeah, this sometimes happens, unfortunately. I think it's my monitor, but on my monitor, your schedule an appointment is cut off. But there's not much we can do about that. It depends on my monitor, so I'm not worried about that. And I like that you've got here, well, connect with us. There's our Yelp. There's our Google+. Plus. There's our Facebook. Uh, I do see you've claimed the name Alpha Dental San Diego on Facebook. And then on Yelp, you seem to have claimed your name as well, although you were the third one, unfortunately. And then Google+, Plus, you need to claim that one, because that one's still set to the numbers. That one's still set to okay. numbers. So claim your name on Google+. Plus. So good. Uh, a lot of good things overall. Any questions or comments for, for this site? Okay, anyone else? Yes? RealHealingNutrition.com? I like that at the very top here, we've also got to sign up and receive our free gift. So good, you're, you're tapping into that idea of giving out free content. Uh, with free content, uh, you're building an audience. Um, you're also, you know, someone puts their name and email. For legitimate purposes, then, you've got someone subscribed to your newsletter. So you could send out email blasts. Hopefully, if you do have that whole system, you've got a way for them to opt out so that they can easily click unsubscribe. Um, that uh, newsletters are great because then you have a captive audience, but you do want to make sure your newsletter has a way for people to easily unsubscribe. If you use something like MailChimp or Constant Contact, that's built in. Whatever system you've got up here probably has it built in, which is what you want. Letting people easily opt out of your email list. We've got some good graphics here that stand out. Are these original pictures? Yeah. That one is obviously. So these ones over here are also original pictures. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah, so again, depending on what you're, uh, what you're about, um, a picture is really going to help. Like, I want to buy that right now. That really works with uh, with the restaurants and such. So get the recipe. You're giving it away for free. Good. You're going to give some things away for free to build this authority that you know what you're doing. Hire me, hire us for your nutrition. So I have to go all the way to the Himalayas to get salt? No, just Trader Joe's. I like these call to action blocks here, but I would craft them a little bit more so that this scroll bar doesn't appear meaning probably cut out one or two words just so that you don't get the scroll bar that really doesn't do anything but looks weird. So depending on your theme, you have a certain amount of space here. This is probably coming from your blog. Is this coming from your blog? Okay, so if you have a way to if you have a way to craft this to maybe fine-tune one of the sentences so that it doesn't cut off here abruptly and it doesn't have the scroll bar, that'd be good. And I would recommend instead of all of these saying learn more, think of some other action words that will entice people to click on that. Um, nutrition and health counseling. You could read, um, you know, what, what do you do here exactly? Benefits. You could say, see the benefits instead of just learn more. What other action words can you use besides that? Twitter down there, good. And then Facebook. You need to claim your name on Facebook. It's still using the, the <coughs> it's still using the default name. Oh, maybe not. It's just that your address down on your site is still the old name. 
doesn't matter, I guess. But yeah, you did claim your name on Facebook. I would then go in just to make sure. Also check it on your site here. Like I said, I can't show it at the same time zoomed in, but it's still showing on the site the full name with the numbers and all of that stuff. So just go back in and make sure. And also, uh, are you still in business? Yeah. Okay, don't forget to <laughs> update that. <laughs> and good design, clean. I have a question about the contact. Since you don't yes. want to have an email, when you go into her contact, so info is acceptable? No, nope. same sort of thing. You don't want to have any email that's just naked out there. So you want this form, though? Yes. Okay. And again, you want a CAPTCHA there to prevent spam. So you don't need your email there. Facebook, that one also has the old address. It'll still take you to the right place, but I would also put the new short address there. And then Twitter. Yeah, so overall looking good. Any other questions or comments on this site? All right. Anyone else? Yes. Um, RyanLeeLAC.com. Like that? RyanLeeLAC.com. What's, what's, it's, it's most likely my monitor. My okay. monitor is a different size than yours, so it's. Uh, so it's set up for mobile. It's through Wix, and on mobile it works perfectly. But this downsizing in the Windows doesn't work as well. Yeah. So, like I said earlier, if you do the downsizing here in the browser, that's not the most accurate way to see if it is mobile friendly. I would still visit it. On, on my device. So I'm going to take a quick look at it on my mobile here. Um, but if that's something that you activated in Wix, that's good. I'm going to take a quick look, Ryan. While that loads up, I'll look here. Again, you've got contact right at the top. Very good. And it is plain text. Address. You've got your social media, so your SEM is working good. You want to claim your Google Plus name. It seems you might still have the old uh, long name. You've got your Yelp. That's good. A lot of traffic comes from Yelp nowadays. LinkedIn. Book now. Maybe the the verbiage of that book us now book me now book a meeting book a session now like make it a little more specific. Um, I got it, but perhaps someone thinks literally a book. Get okay. the book now. Okay. You said this is a Wix site. Yeah, overall, it's I think it's designed pretty well. Maybe your slideshow's passing by a little too fast. Okay. Out of the corner of my eye, it's kind of passing a little too fast. I'm sure that if I put my mouse on it, it pauses, but uh, it doesn't. So if I wanted to stop and read our sports acupuncture treatments, cut off. So you might want to check the speed of your slideshow. And yeah, my monitor's cutting you off there, but I'm sure it's fine on other monitors. Subscribe. What's that? It should probably happen right away because that sort of thing, once you save and publish, it just goes out. Subscribe for updates. That's good, but again, think about more actively, like really, okay, updates, why would I subscribe? I'll just visit the site. If you have here something more like subscribe for exclusive updates or um, subscribe or like become a member become an exclusive member you know think of ways to really entice people to subscribe not just here's a subscription box be, be perhaps a little more catchy you've got the nav bar at the bottom is the difference because at the top this is graphics no i just read somewhere that it's good to have a menu at the bottom as well it's the same exact menu 
yes, that's that's good advice. Mostly if your top menu is graphic based, and then your bottom menu could be text based. That way you're sure that the search engines pick up those menu items. So if they're both text and and if they're both text, you might not really need the one at the bottom. You could use you could put other things at the bottom for that screen real estate. And then your again your your email address naked right there. You you should have a contact form elsewhere to help protect you against that spam spam harvesters. That's good that you've got these qualifications and such in bullet points. Very bullet points are always good to you know present a lot of information in a succinct way instead of a big old boring paragraph bullet points are good you've got these divisions here these are headings that's good too this is good the frequently asked questions this is what's helping what's going to be helping your SEO because that's how people might be searching so think of those questions where people might plug into the Google search and then those questions that they may be asking in Google would be questions that you add to your FAQ okay. vice versa and do they have to be in your keywords as well like if they're just on the page that's good enough on the page that's good enough because the content itself is what again gets analyzed uh, the keywords and such are part of the puzzle, but the content itself on the page, that's, the, that's a big deal as well. And then again here, uh, make sure that links over to your contact form where you can safely get, a, and get an appointment instead of that email just out there in the wind. Well, we're pretty over time at this point. There might be one or two more people that need to, that want to see this. I can help you right after we're done. But I'm going to wrap up here saying that uh, SEO is a big ball of wax. It's an ongoing process. So hopefully in what you've learned here, you will continue to apply it to your site. As time goes on, this stuff will change. You might have to then keep learning on your own, find another book, take the class again, but it's always changing. You may see, well, I'm just busy running my business. I'm also going to need to do all of this and get on Twitter and optimize and all of that. Yes, or you can hire someone, but then when you hire someone, maybe now you'll be savvy about what they're doing, and maybe you'll be seeing what they're doing wrong. If they're going to come at you and say, you, yeah, pay us $500, and in one month you'll be number one. Well, they're probably going to take that money and do Google Ads, and you will be number one. But then when that budget runs out, you'll be back to number 21. Maybe they're going to come at you and say, okay, we'll, we'll work on it, and then in three months we'll, we'll assess. That's good. But then they'll say, okay, we're going we're gonna to put in a keyword strategy where we're going to claim your name with those keywords, and we're going to put your, the, in the address those keywords, and we're going to use the keywords. They're keyword stuffing. They're using an old technique. So now that you've got some of these concepts, and as you educate yourself more, if you do hire someone, hopefully you get a good uh, social media or SEO company. So we're going to wrap up at this point.